My name is Tom Donahue. I live in uh, Pacific City in South Tillamook County, and I'm running for County Commissioner uh, position uh, number one, uh, formerly held by um, Commissioner Herleman, who's retiring soon. I um, have lived in Tillamook County since 1980. I'm a director of the uh, Pacific City Dorymans Association, very involved in fisheries issues. Uh, I've been um, involved in the state capital on those issues and, and others. I currently work for the uh, Oregon State Lottery and um, worked for them for just about 20 years. I'm a technical analyst, troubleshooter. I wear a lot of hats, but uh, I uh, train folks. I write technical manuals, but I, uh, where my qualifications as an analyst would come in, especially would be uh, critical for budgeting and that sort of thing. Uh, we have um, a lot of problems in this county. However, um, with my qualifications, I've you know I came from Portland, uh, moved here, like I say, in 1980, and um, been a commercial fisherman uh, as well as a photographer and and other things. But um, I have other <clears throat> schooling, mostly in management and in. Um, electronics, uh, computer sciences, that sort of thing. Been involved in a lot of uh, areas in the in the community in Pacific City, uh, in the Stucca Valley Community Alliance, the local Lions Club. I mentioned the Dory Association, and the community. These community activities have uh, pointed me to the fact that a a lot of um, problems are in this county. For example. Uh, it appears that our, our infrastructure, especially our roads, has been deteriorating for a long period of time. Um, and um, access to our um, natural resources like the ocean, our fisheries, our, our, our forestry products and that sort of thing. I'm very concerned about that and I, I think I can make a difference. Okay, well... I have the insights and uh, leadership abilities to make Tillamook County prosper again. I, with the participation of our, our local citizens, I can't do this alone, obviously. We, uh, we can be, make a magnificent sea change in our, in our, our prosperity of Tillamook's future. A simple answer to why we have these problems uh, and why they exist is we've been living in the past. The uh, world's changed around us. We need to uh, change the way we govern. Um, but not only that, at the same time, besides change in some practical ways revolving our, uh, the economic realities, we still need to vociferously and continuously argue for our access to our natural resources, our farmlands, uh, uh, our, our, our forestry products, and, and um, our uh, oceans. It, I mean, this is our ocean, uh, these are our forests, and these natural resources belong to us. They don't belong to Salem or Washington, D.C. We need to pr protect our, our access to these things and uh, protect, protect uh, the environment as well. These things can be done. They're sustainable. The library issue is uh, one that I've responded to several times uh, in, your, in your newspaper. I think there's, there's some practical uh, ways to, to deal with it. Personally, I happen to think it's one of the most beautiful libraries I've ever seen. Uh, I know it was a lot of the original construction was uh, was helpful or was funded by the efforts of uh, former Senator uh, Mark Hatfield. And I mean, there is a conference room uh, named after him, so to honor those efforts. But uh, the library itself is a, is a wonderful, uh, wonderful building. It was expensive. It's expensive to, to operate. However, uh, the system itself also operates, seems to operate pretty well. We have a we have a branch in uh, Pacific City. That I've only seen a couple of the branches. Pacific City is one, obviously. It's um, also a, a, a beautiful structure. 
and it's most of it is uh, operating expenses are, are taken care of by a thrift store uh, in Pacific City that um, uh, has it, it's operated uh, by a oh I would say like a friends of the library group and I, I believe there are some, several of the other branches have similar groups that uh, that look out for it the 65 cents per 1,000 property tax evaluation measure that's in, in front of us, however, I think is a, a bit steep uh, for the uh, economy as it is. Uh, the country, the state, the county are all in pretty financial straits and, and then to maintain, I know it's the same uh, identical budget we had before, but uh, Gee, uh, considering the times, it might be a little more practical to um, have a smaller measure. The roads are the most, uh, the highest priority. It should be the highest priority there, and we can talk about that later. But the library, uh, to maintain the same level of service, uh, to ask for this much, I don't think is practical. However, and. I'm a pretty good budget guy, and looking at the uh, library's budget, the one thing that caught my attention almost immediately, actually a couple things. First was that there was a follow-on amount of money or a starting balance. Last year, or actually this year's budget, or budget cycle, 2011-2012, uh, is uh, $1.5 million in change. And it's also part of the budget that the ending balance for this budget cycle is $1.4 million. And that $1.4 million would be forwarded to the 2012-2013 budget. Well, for starters, where'd that $1.5 million come from? Obviously from the previous year. And I looked, uh, the budget documents only show to 2008. This is the fifth year, but that was the second year. And every year there was a, uh, a forwarding amount of money. So maybe 65 cents per thousand evaluation is a little high. However, we have uh, the paper had stated and uh, uh, other comments have been made by other, other people that the um, one of the other commission, one of the commissioners, I believe it was Mr. Josie, stated that on July 1st of this coming year, the doors would close to the budget if the measure didn't pass. Why would you, why would you do that if there's still 1.4 million dollars still in the bank that's going to be forwarded to the following year? Let's look at something. Uh, I have a pretty good idea. This is probably going to fail, and that that's sad because I happen to, like I say, think a great deal of our system. But we have. The actual operating day-to-day -day budget is $2.6 million and change. And of that $2.6 million, $1.6 million is labor, including three managers for 22 employees. Seems a bit extravagant. Well, we, because the economy is, is stressed as it is, and a lot of folks in Tillamook County are, are hurting, 60% of our children in our schools, for example, are on some kind of subsidized food. I mean, it's time to think about cutting it back a little bit. Let's try something practical like the first year of the budget, say 40 cents per thousand. Second year, 45. Third year, 55 cents. Considering that the economy is going to get better, or we can, we can shoot for that anyway. At the end of that period, if, and we can, you can measure that by the gross domestic product of the state. So if it does get better, so the fourth and fifth years, let's bring it to that 65 cent level. If it isn't, let's go back to the 40 cent level to get through these tough times. It's gonna be a little tough on the, on the library. You might be thinking about some furloughs or some part-time work or more volunteers. I mean, that's a hard thing to consider when you, you look at these are real people and they've served us very well. Uh, but sometimes hard decisions have to be made. This, unfortunately, now's the time to make those decisions.
our roads should be and would be my top priority, period. We've got some huge problems here and they've been coming on for a long time, but uh, why they are the case, the way they are is probably for a couple of reasons. One, lack of funding uh, because of timber uh, revenues falling off. Uh, that's pretty obvious. I think everybody understands that. But the other one is because our mills and, and farmers and other folks have to uh, now truck all their product in and out. Before we had a railroad. And that railroad, I think it's critical we figure out a way to, to get the ports railroad uh, connection to the valley back. Uh, we desperate, it's vital. We desperately need this. Everything we use and everything uh, that we need comes into and goes out of, or did by that railroad. So we need to figure out how to, how to take care of that. So that's one of the reasons why our roads are the condition they are because we have a heck of a lot more heavy trucks that are taking product in and out of the county. How, how to fund it, uh, we need to look at the, uh, the formula that uh, the state uses, and I think Tillamook County's been getting the short end of the stick for a long period of time. However, some of that's based on population, and uh, the formula also touches on regi uh, registrations of cars, uh, gas tax, and that sort of thing. Well, Part of the, what's heard is here is that 5,000 citizens have left the county in the last five or six years. Oh, it seems like that railroad kind of washed out about six, seven, eight years ago the last time. Funny how those coincidences kind of uh, fall into place there. It's kind of a trickle down thing. But uh, I don't know. You, one of the ways I was thinking of, uh, just kind of thinking out of the box, and I, I know this gets in people's cross, but maybe possibly have some kind of a county sales tax, but make it seasonal. Now a seasonal sales tax just during the uh, summer and fall months when most uh, fishermen, hunters, and um, folks that come down to visit the beaches in the summer would help pay for our, our, our road use because there's more use obviously as well as, uh, as uh, normal time people are here and then of course in the winter uh, and the uh, and spring months uh, we wouldn't have it make it seasonal so it doesn't hurt the doesn't hurt the, the locals as much during the off season when a lot of lot more of us are working i think we still probably need to have a a permanent some sort of a permanent um, uh, measure levy um, I'm not talking about a whole lot of money, maybe two or three, two or three per, uh, cents, something like that, just for basic maintenance, not major, major uh, repairs. Unfortunately, that's where we're at. We're at major repairs, or we're going to start losing it. We're talking about, we're talking about put, taking some of our roads back to gravel, out of necessity. It's it, they're becoming dangerous, which brings us to the public safety factor. You know. Um, if we need to do something, uh, a motel tax uh, doesn't work. I've talked to, because you can only use 30% of it. I've talked to several folks on the, um, the committee that uh, put together the last one. You would think you'd be able to take more money out of uh, the general fund, but uh, state law won't allow us to do that because we're uh, what we call uh, the Tillamook County as well as 26 other counties are what they call agents of the state. And uh, unless you're a home rule county, home rule county is a, has a charter, much like a, 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 a incorporated city does. An incorporated city can use all or as much of their general fund as they want because they're incorporated. That uh, charter is much like a mini constitution. It would change the way we do uh, a lot of things. It allows us a lot more leeway in uh, financial as well as political terms. Well, let's just say that um, Territorial Sea out here is our ocean. It doesn't belong to Salem or to Washington, D.C. 
those resources uh, should be ours to use. And I don't mind sharing, but uh, marine reserves, um, wind energy, and that sort of thing are cutting into, they're taking whole swaths of the ocean away from those of us who have used it traditionally going back 100, 150 years, uh, however old the county is. Uh, the Dory Association, that I'm a, a director of in Pacific City, uh, has been recording our use of that area between Cape Lookout and Cascade Head for well over 100 years. So to all of a sudden have a marine reserve in our backyard, uh, the process was tainted to start with. Uh, I actually participated in the Cascade Head uh, community team. And the only good thing I can say that I got out of that experience was to understand the scientific community a little better. I mean, if you were a scientist, and uh, it would be just wonderful if you had the opportunity to study the ocean without man's uh, footprint involved, we, uh, especially an ocean that's in such pristine condition. We've been modifying, as commercial fishermen and recreational fishermen, we've been modifying our uh, fishing methods for years uh, when we've discovered that there was a, a stock that might have be, be in trouble, and we continuously rebuild those stocks because we, we monitor them between the Fish, Pacific Fisheries Management Council, and NOAA, uh, the International Halibut Commission, uh, all these other types of international, regional, and or Department of Fish and Wildlife, state uh, organizations of the regulating fishing along the Oregon coast. We don't need marine reserves. We take care of it already. Now, as far as uh, wind energy is concerned, we got a lot of problems there. Uh, clamshell devices, uh, they were talking about putting one on our reef a mile off, mile offshore of Pacific City to, to hydraulically use the wave's energy. Uh, but if you're only a mile offshore, these huge devices are like 10 stories tall and eight, nine stories wide, and they're, and they're creating waves of their own, they're gonna have erosion problems, not to mention the ecological disaster it's gonna have on our reef and, and, it's, and our fishery there. Uh, we have uh, site problems with windmills. These are 40 story tall uh, devices. What, if you own a piece of property, if you own a, on a, a view property, say you were, you'd worked hard and managed to have uh, the wherewithal to buy a piece of property like that. Would you like to look at, you know, three, seven, 10, 12 miles offshore to see a 40, you know, a 40 story, that's 400 feet ballpark windmill out there, you know, or before you had a nice seascape to look at? Your property values are gonna fall because people with that wherewithal are going to go to another part of the coast where property is, is available, and your property is gonna to continue to fall because you can't sell it, and or the only way you're gonna sell it is to lower the, to lower the value of what you have. So why, and then we have no say about it. it the, the Federal Energy Commission, they, they have the final say in the Territorial Sea Plan and in the Territorial Sea Working Group uh, may not have anything to say about it. Uh, the federal, federal government has the final say, and it seems kind of uh, uh, this huge timely push about um, um, energy uh, by the current uh, administration. Uh, seems like a, a giant boondoggle. Look at the Solyndra and all these other, other solar things. I think they're, it's a pig in a the poke. They're, they're doing the same thing with wind and wave energy. They're not looking through it. And they're pushing it as hard as they can. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I don't think they ought to be there, period. Land use issues. Well, I have served on the uh, Pacific City uh, Community Planning Advisory Group. Um, so. I've become very knowledgeable about what's going on in land use. Oregon state land use law is a one size fits all uh, type of law. 
And it doesn't necessarily work real well for the coast. It doesn't necessarily work real well for Northeast Oregon or Southeast Oregon or Southwest Oregon. It works really well in Portland and the Valley. Uh, so there was actually some effort this uh, legislative session to try to make, uh, to modify land, u in land use uh, uh, law in a practical way to make it regional. To, and uh, we really need to do this. However, <clears throat> as far as the forest is concerned, generally there are forests. Uh, it's a renewable resource. We should be able to log and uh, renew that resource and plant it. We used to be one of the wealthiest counties in this, in this uh, state because of our logging practices, being able to log, just that simple. Now over the years, we've, we've learned that riparian zones around streams for our salmon habitat and everything is extremely important. We have used, uh, we've learned that there are uh, uh, other critters that need to, to, to be uh, looked after. However, you know, man's kind of at the top of the uh, uh, totem pole here and, you know, basically a good book says the flora and fauna were there for our use. Not misuse, but use and to take care of our families. And we need to, as I mentioned earlier, need to vociferously argue our access to our forest, our forest and, and, and maintain our, our current um, farmlands. I believe in maintaining farmlands, maintaining our forests for, for our use. And the estuaries, I'm a fisherman. I'm a commercial fisherman, have been. I'm a recreational fisherman now. Uh, our estuaries are the incubators for our, our fish, and, and those things need to be protected. Um, there are ways in land use law to swap wetlands. I'm not real fond of that. I understand the ecological systems are uh, kind of all stick together. They interrelate. So it's important to maintain, especially our, our wetlands close to, to our rivers and our tidal, our tidal areas. So you're not going to get an argument out, out of that. I'm, I'm, a real, I'm a conservationist. And I know there's a green argument and there's the other side of the, of the, of the coin, but you know, there's, there's a practical way to do these things. There's a, middle, there's a decent middle of the road so that all sides can, can get a little bit and maintain uh, those principles. I mean, come on, the Endangered Species Act and an owl, uh, to stop all our logging, that was ridiculous. Uh, the, I'll give you another, they go to great lengths. The Beach Bell was, uh, uh, had a, the Beach Bell had an, an instance where you practically couldn't uh, allow access. One was a military situation and, and the other was a police emergency. Those are practical things. But through administrative rule, they changed it. They added a few more words and wildlife habitat. So consequently, our beach from uh, Cape uh, Kowanda all the way south to the mouth of the Nestucca River, they were going to close it down between March and August for the snowy plover. That's the whole summer. We're, we're a resort community. Are they out of their minds? Well, we talked them out of it. But, you know, land use issues, my basic bottom line is, if it's your piece of dirt, you ought to be able to do with it what you want, as long as it doesn't interfere with your neighbors. Now, there are other practicalities uh, revolving around our environment. So... You must judge all those things too. But my bottom line is, if you own it, you ought to be able to use it. I firmly believe that our current commissioners have done a pretty good job on our flooding uh, problems that we've had here, mitigating the FEMA's plans. Uh, I applaud their efforts. They did, they did a really good job. I, I think that uh, Oregon Solutions, for example, uh, and Senator Betsy Johnson uh, did most of the yeoman's work in, in the making that uh, some of the flood mitigation here uh, work. Um, taking away farmland 
uh, from people just by redrawing a map. That's not right. They, they not, our, our, our county commissioners, our current commission, did the right thing. They yelled and screamed. They, they did what they needed to do to make sure that FEMA re-looked at that. I applaud their efforts. I think it was a great job. County budget is um, an amazing document. There are a lot of things that preceded it in past years, uh, how it was prioritized. Because we can't use the general fund for roads, we've got to come up with something else out of the box, and we've talked about that. But the next highest priority is public safety, our sheriff's department. Our, our current sheriff, Andy Long, is an acquaintance of mine. We've, we have had a, a couple of small discussions uh, about it. If uh, the county in general uh, has um, sometimes too many supervisors. It's tough dealing with uh, uh, the union sometimes when they have uh, kept a uh, wages and, and benefits over a long period of time. And we're dealing with people, uh, our, our, our county employees are wonderful people. They've served us well, they work hard. Uh, the roads, uh, public works department have been cut back uh, right now, or I think we're down to, um, I think 10 people plus uh, three supervisors. I question three supervisors. But uh, I understood it was one was from north, south, and central. Perhaps we need just one supervisor, and uh, the <coughs> two other supervisors would be uh, the top of the of the line to be promoted when times get a little better. Right now, our, our economy is is hurting. Uh, we've got far too many people that are uh, out of work. We need to change our uh, budgeting priorities to reflect that. These are hard, tough decisions. We're dealing with real people here. <clears throat> the idea of additional revenue steams, new taxes, I'm not, I don't think that's practical at all. Uh, I don't think we should do that. The only, only new revenue streams I think we should even be considering are for the roads. We've already taxed too much. And even that tax we're going to, or tax says, we're going to have to be pretty, uh, th think pretty much out of the box here because we're, we're so limited in, in how things are set up for, for the roads. But uh, in general, the county budget needs to be pared some. You need a pretty sharp pencil. And yeah, some, sometimes these folks are our friends that we're dealing with. So maybe we ought to start thinking about furloughs. Like I mentioned to you earlier, I work for the Oregon State Lottery, and uh, we've had furloughs for some times. And there are certain there are certain types of um, employees that furloughs are impractical, and we've found this out the hard way over the last five or six years. For example, prison uh, guards, and the other would be public safety officers. And the reason is you got if they, you force them to take a, some time off, you have to have somebody to cover that area while they're gone. So that ends up in overtime. It ends up costing you more. And that's those that's the reality. The state didn't really think it out that that thoroughly, and they they're starting to modify it by it a little bit. But uh, so we can learn from those mistakes. You know, we're not going to create a whole lot of money, but. Uh, it's time to start thinking about maybe pairing back uh, close to courthouse one day a month. You know, little things like that. Still maintain emergency services and, and public safety, but what we got going right now is not working. The status quo is just not adequate. It's, in, it's just not going to work. We've got to change how we do business, and that's just the necessity of it. Times of uh, gone right by us. We need to be more modern and think a little bit more practically when it comes to the budget. Okay, what I bring to the table. Well, I have experience at the county and the state level. Uh, 
the state level, I've been fortunate to be mentored by both uh, the former commissioner, or the soon-to-be former commissioner, uh, Herleman, who's one of my mentors, and, and who's endorsed my candidacy, by the way, as well as Paul Hanneman. <clears throat> Paul is, was a state representative uh, for 26 years, uh, represented this area, and was also a county commissioner. I spent many, many hours at the state capitol with Paul, uh, testifying with him uh, on fisheries issues, as uh, well as other things. He's taught me how the state house works, how government works. So that experience will be a definite asset to Tillamook County when I become county commissioner. I also have a tremendous analytical skills. I am an analyst, a technical analyst for the Oregon State Lottery. Uh, Basically, I research problems. I'm a troubleshooter. And those skills, uh, repairing things, looking for answers, solutions to problems. Um, Mildred Davies called me a troubleshooter. No, there, there's a name dropper for you. I, she saw me talk at a, at a, uh, a Kawinas meeting or some, somewhere, and she asked me to come visit her and uh, on the, her radio program, and I came and, and she said, oh, you're a troubleshooter. I said, well, no, Mildred, I'm actually a, 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 a representative for the life. No, you're a troubleshooter. And the next thing you know, after I left that interview, everybody was waiting for me, my next customers said, don't argue with, don't argue with Mildred, you're a troubleshooter. So that was kind of fun. So according to Mildred Davies, I'm a troubleshooter. Well, the other things I bring to the counter is vision. I've always had the ability to kind of see a solution down the road. And then when you have, it's like a goal, it's like goal setting. If you see a goal down there, you gotta figure out how to get to it. And there's usually lots of little logical steps there. But I've always seen that, I've always had the vision of seeing the result before I start, not just a goal. And <clears throat> finally, I bring values to the table. And, and I mean this, I mean, I. I'm kind of conservative in, 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 in my values, but I believe America and her people have been blessed by God. We are special. I believe in God, and because of uh, Him, I believe in myself. I believe in America and the citizens of Tillamook County. I believe that Tillamook County citizens are intelligent, ethical, hardworking, and practical people. I value the county's natural beauty with its open spaces, farmlands, rivers, Pacific Ocean, our beaches, and especially our forests. I value the rural sense of community here with neighbors looking out after neighbors. I value our children, our place of worship, our nonprofit and private fraternal organizations, and I especially value our can-do spirit. I believe in promoting economic development, job creation by supporting our small business community. I believe in reducing government waste, and I believe in encouraging development of affordable housing in our county. <coughs> I also believe that a handout restrains ambition. A hand up encourages it. Americans, Tillamook County citizens will excel when less government interacts with their lives. Those are my values.